Welcome to Norwich Northwest Methodist Church's Sunday service with Reverend Mary Sachikonye. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Sydney. Welcome to our service, the 14th June 2020. Our call to worship this morning is coming from Psalm 51, verse 1 to 12. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins, wash away all my evil, and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I'm always conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you, Lord, and done what you consider evil. So you are right in judging me. You are justified in condemning me. I've been evil from the day I was born, and from the time I was conceived, I've been sinful. Sincerity and truth are what you require. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Remove my sin and I'll be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. And though you have crushed me and broken me, I will be happy once again. Close your eyes to my sins, Father, and wipe out all my evil create a pure heart in me oh god and put a new and loyal spirit do not punish me from your presence do not take your holy spirit away from me give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you that's our call to worship for today we are now going to hear our first hymn from Keith Lilly, Great is the Lord, which is hymn 50. Thank you. Over to you, Keith.
Heavenly Father, we come to you today seeking to know and understand your truth. The love which you displayed to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, whose life teaches us how to correctly navigate our way through life, to see clearly the realities of a fallen world. Help us realise and appreciate the unending gifts of your grace. Show us how to overcome our natural ignorance of your ways. Let us be guided by your principles of love, truth, peace and forgiveness, to do your will through our words and deeds. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The Lord says, The time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Although I was like a husband to them, they did not keep that covenant. The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be like this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach a neighbour to know the Lord because all will know me from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thanks be to God. Amen. The coming of the kingdom of God. Once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running off after them. Amen. Build your house on a sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. Well, it might be kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice, or you'll have to build your house once more. You better build your house upon a rock. Make a good foundation on a solid spot. All the storm may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. Don't build your house on a sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. Well, it might be kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice, or you'll have to build your house once more. You better build your house upon a rock. Make a good foundation on a solid spot. All the storms may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. Uh, here we had our Bible reading coming from um, Luke and Jeremiah talking about the kingdom of heaven. And a, my favorite one is from Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to 16. When Jesus is saying to the disciples, those who reject uh, the kingdom of heaven, they're just like rejecting the children because we are so beautiful before the eyes of God. Look at how Alicia and Asia were singing so beautiful. There's that beauty that shines through you. Each time I think of children and your beauty, I always want to sing that little lamp of mine. I'm gonna let it shine That little lamp of mine I'm gonna let it shine That little lamp of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine I hope you've joined me in singing this beautiful song 
which talks about the little lamp which is you children beautiful you shine the world and you shine in our families thank you alicia and thank you asia and today i'm not preaching over to you olu who is going to talk about the coming of the kingdom Let us pray. Speak to me, Lord, and speak through me. Grant that we may be heard in spirit, light, and truth. Bless the words of my mouth as well as the meditation of our hearts, so that your word and ways may be permanently engraved in our hearts to the delight of your glory. Amen. My appreciation of our readers of today and a special appreciation of our minister, Reverend Mary Sachikonye, for the privilege of sharing these few words with you on this platform. I don't know about you, but I have been hearing of the idea of a kingdom of God since I can remember. What and where is this elusive kingdom? Like a journey on a treasure hunt, every Christian, have embarked on the search for the kingdom of God for over 2,000 years. For instance, if you look at our Lord's Prayer, which we recite every so often, the centerpiece of it asks for the kingdom to come. The question is, come from where? Come to where? The idea of a kingdom it's not strange to people from these islands. As a country of nations bounded by a common allegiance to the queen, we understand what it means to be subjects, rather less citizens of a kingdom. If you take a look at the ordinary dictionary meaning of the word kingdom, you find it's defined as a country, state or territory ruled by a king or queen. So you so readily identify with the territorial space, the legal and political leadership, the person of who and in whom such definition is unified. Territorial as well as political dominion is key. And so is the expectation of a wider obligation to recognize and obey the dictates and laws of the king or queen. Such is the picture of an earthly kingdom, which in a way is still identifiable with the description we found in the Old Testament account of the great many prophets, such as Samuel, Isaiah, and prophet Jeremiah, who we heard from this morning. All of them prophets walked and under the direction of kings expressing the wishes and feelings of God. So reconciling those pictures of established authority with the humility of the teachings of Christ was therefore bound to cause not only the kind of confusion but concerns exposed in a Bible passage according to Luke today. Here Luke gave an account of Christ's profound encounter with the Pharisees who questioned him of how best to locate the kingdom of God. Luke, as we know, was a very close associate of Paul. He was a gentile, he was a physician. His analysis of the lifetimes and ministry of Christ was forensic. The practicality and empirical references with which Luke writes, distinguishing from other gospels, and he strived to give a logical account of concepts with which Christ was concerned, backed by factual instances on which they are drawn. This encounter is no different. Like the imagined Christian community to whom his gospel was directed, we here today are equally troubled by the idea of God's kingdom. As the Pharisees who, as is typically done, were curious about the legitimacy of an earthly representation of the kingdom by and in Christ. Now, like the Jews of the time, our understanding of the kingdom is in the physicality. 
they have heard great many prophets spoke of kingdoms and served different kings in different kingdoms. So it is natural that, that their understanding of kingdom is of a place ruled by a king and which can be seen and identified. In sharp contrast was Jesus' deviation from this that he denounced the idea of God's kingdom being that visible and observable by reference to an individual territory or authority. Here, he told them, that kingdom is not capable of being so readily identified but confirmed. It is here with them. It is in your midst, which may be read as referring to himself in representation of all the divine kingdom stand for, or indeed implanted within everyone who were privileged to hear him as he was describing it. Christ here disentangled the idea of the centrality of a figure to a conceptualized idea of God's kingdom as embodied in himself, universal and non-doctrinal. Mark's opening words for Christ was about the kingdom which he said was at hand, denoting imminence and urgency of its presence, not one which is capable of being handled in our hands. It is as well anticipatory as we repeatedly, but not necessarily thoughtfully recite in the Lord's Prayer when we say, your kingdom come. The idea of God's kingdom must now be explained by reference to our normal understanding of the constant presence of God with us and how the centrality of our focus of the institution of the church is embedded in that understanding. After all, upon his departure, Christ conferred the authority to constitute the foundation of Christianity on Peter. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, On this rock, I will build my church. The last words in Matthew's gospel, as in 28, 18, is all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. In verse 19, it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we have the Great Commission and we have the church. And then comes, in our example, the pandemic such that we have never seen before. Well, they said they had it in 110 years ago. That was so well before my time. It not only shut the churches down, but it shut nations and the world down. It ravages like we have never seen before and defied every common sense and science. Do we then give up on the idea of the kingdom? Given the center of gravity has now shifted, of course, no. According to Jesus Christ and the disciples, we have been authorized, not only in the good news we have spread within the confines of our churches for generations, but are now challenged to do as commanded, go and make disciples of our nations, he said. How do you reach nations when you cannot even fly without mandatory detention on reaching your destination? Quarantine. Very frightening words. A weekly video stream of services started like an experimentation. We were all jittery, weary, and have no idea how best to go about it. Now it has produced a number of celebrities. Reverend Mary, Keith Lilly, great many others with exemplary power of technology supported by an IT disciple, Sydney. We are viewed on average 300 to 400 weekly. We should probably represent the entire Christian population in Norwich. Other churches have gone viral too. Our superintendent, Reverend Catherine Horton, the Southern churches, Wyndham, Heather, Seth, Molly, through Reverend Steve Collis, chapel fairs on Zoom every week by Reverend Matthew Olariwaju, 
and those I call the southern borders, Pastor Sean Worsley, Attleboro, and the border churches, as I call them. While preparing this, I asked myself, where is the God's kingdom in the video image of the Minneapolis police knee on Mr. George Floyd's neck? Like Jesus Christ, when the hour came, he called out to his mother. In agony, he screamed, Mama, Mama. The response I had to my inquiry was the word purpose. What was the purpose of his death? Which, as we now know, became the catalyst for a worldwide protest of anger, frustration, and disdain for the kingdoms of this earth. Who in a million years will emphasize that an American president will pose in front of a historical Episcopal church with the Bible held upside down and front back in front of the whole world? Who will think that the statue of the great illustrious son of Bristol, Edward Colston, will be defaced and thrown into the sea, the same water through which millions of Africans made their death and generational demise through slave trade and its consequences. So with God's will are God's purposes, and we pay tribute to the martyrdom of Mr. George Floyd, with whose family we continue to pray for peace. It gets me to ponder of the true meaning of church itself. See, it came out of the Greek word ekklesia, meaning called out. Note, it says called out, not called in. So from within, we must call out. And that is our mission as envisioned by John and Charles Wellesley, a church with a mission. In conclusion, Prophet Jeremiah, who we heard from today, anticipated the new order when in his prophecy he saw that kingdom which is extraterritorial beyond the confines of our brick walls and one that is meant to be implanted in our hearts was a foundational thought that linked the old and the new order together. When we allow it to be embedded in our hearts, we represent and indeed share the treasures of the kingdom. To many a traditionalist, the church represents everything godly, and as Christ described it, a kingdom in our midst. Holiness and piety are attached to the value of the church, that we even tend to arrogate some perfection of faith to our culture of attendances at Sunday worship. We've been compelled to find other ways now to express and share the same faith. And we cannot simply assume that because of the, of the limitation of time and space that we have now moved the center of gravity. The answer is no. The kingdom was never intended to be physical and something that we can see. It is one that dwells in us and is embedded in our heart. When Christ answered that question, that it is in your midst, I doubt if he was actually referring to himself. I think he was referring to everyone who was present. That if you follow his ways, if you follow his dictates, if you follow the laws as he laid it to us, you will be representative of the kingdom. The church may have served as the focus of a free expression of everything godly, manifestation of beliefs and faith, for thousands of years. The church may be defined in the institution that is confined within the brick walls, but the church is actually beyond the brick walls. If we are to do as he commanded us, to go out to all nations and proclaim the gospel, extending the stewardship of God's words and messages of truth to all and sundry, is challenged by a, a naive and perverse perception of the new technology as facilitating the spread of the kingdom across the people and nations. We must now accept that we must take advantage of every good thing that he created around us. We must deploy and utilize them to reach beyond 
the traditional beyond the conventional. We must do as others have done successfully to spread the good news, the message that we have, that we have shared with ourselves within the confines of her buildings beyond and take it to those that we are not able to physically access. In conclusion, Prophet Jeremiah told us that if we differentiate between the law as the people of the old saw it, as engraved on the stone, which he now emphasized to be embedded in our hearts, those hearts must now reach out. We must develop whatever it takes to go beyond the confines of where we think the limitation of the spread of the word is. The current experiences of the church reaching out beyond the visible walls as templates for sustaining the ways of practice and sharing the good news of Christ. As the true God's kingdom is one good story to take from the lockdown experience. As I've told so many people, lockdown was a horrible experience, but we did derive a lot of good things from the lockdown. We appreciate the sense of peace, sense of rest, which we all need. We must therefore continue to go, not in deviation from that which we're bringing out from the lockdown. We must continue to pray for the will to represent the kingdom in us and in all we do. And all were privileged to meet to share the good news that the kingdom is indeed here in our midst. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Olu, for such a powerful word reminding us that the kingdom is here. The kingdom is within us. All we have to do is to fulfill and obey the command that Jesus has taught us. Thank you very much, Olu. We are now going to continue with our plea, offertory plea, to those who still feel they are able to do their uh, free will offertory, please do so. For those who cannot, please don't feel pressured. We continue to say this so that we are able to be financially stable when our church is open. But it is not a message to pressure anyone. Follow what the church is saying, your stewards and your treasurers, and continue to give graciously. And God will continue to bless us, and God will continue to remember even those who are facing difficulties. We are now going to hear our prayer of offertory from Alan. Over to you, Alan. Thank you. We walk by faith. We live by faith, we give by faith. God of great gifts, who has given us so much, accept the gifts we make, our faithful response, your abundant grace. Amen. Christ beside me, the light in the dark, the presence in our loneliness, the strength in our weakness, the guide in our lostness. He is ready to carry not only our burdens, but us if need be. He is the mission we take to others. Whilst we cannot meet together in our buildings, we can meet together in spirit and prayer, so with one Lord, one faith, as one church, we pray together. For our world, created perfect, our human choices of disobedience leading to the world we see now. In the time of a global pandemic, we pray for those across the globe impacted by this virus, directly with the loss of family and friends, 
indirectly with the loss of income and livelihood. We pray for people dealing with the added impact of war and conflict in Yemen, in Syria and the Middle East, and in countries where people are protesting about racism. May they find peace and resolution and space to recover. Bless the agencies and workers giving aid and support. We pray for the leaders and rulers of these areas, and the leaders and rulers seeking to have their say in the regions, that they may make choices leading to greater peace and less conflict. We pray for our own leaders in Europe and the United Kingdom. We ask they receive the wisdom, judgment and will to take us forward for the common good. We continue to pray for our health, emergency and social care workers, dealing with the added strains of new work practices and protective equipment while seeking to help us all. We pray for our church within the world as church leaders stand up for the rights of those oppressed. Give them the courage to speak out and make a difference for us all. Be with our circuit locally as our ministers approach a time of change. May they continue to find ways forward for us as the community of Christ in a society which appears to have turned its back on the church. We pray that we remain welcoming to new ways of worship as we begin to move from lockdown to unlock. May we never lock out those seeking your help at this time. As churches across London will be ringing a bell this evening 72 times in tribute to those who lost their lives in the Grenfell Tower tragedy three years ago, we pray for those affected. We pray for the Reverend Mary and our local church leaders. We think of those on our own church prayer lists. Help them to remain close in our prayers as we remain separated by distance from one another. Christ beside us, help us to be your lights in the dark, your presence in loneliness, your strength in our weakness, your guides in our lostness. Christ, the mission for us to take to others. Amen. Let us join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Thank you for watching. Uh, please do subscribe, like, or share our worship channel. God bless you as you do.